And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. And today we're taking a look at Conspiracy, the Solomon Gambit. Now, Conspiracy, you might like, ah, have I heard of that before? Well, probably you have. Conspiracy, according to the rule book, was designed in 1973 by Dr. Eric Solomon, who incidentally is the main bad guy of this game. Um, and I actually have played Conspiracy. Uh, it, it, he was he designed it in 1973, but it actually became a board game that sold in stores in 1982. And I definitely played this game when I was a kid. I remember playing it, moving the suitcase around. I didn't remember much more than that, but Restoration Games, their shtick is they take these older games, redesign them, make them better if they can, or kind of redevelop them to some degree and definitely make them look nicer and so therefore we have conspiracy in game in which up to four players are trying to use the same spies and agents to help get a briefcase of important information some MacGuffin of some sort back to your base so that you can win the game Each player is going to get 30 gold coins that they're going to place on a board in front of them. This board has various agents here. There's, there's six different agents in the game. Players are going to randomly draw one of these. Each player will get a different one that's secret. And you're going to put three coins on that person. And they're going to pick two other agents and put a coin on each of them. Now all this is done behind a shield. So no one else is going to know what you're doing. And in fact, the shield's going to stay up over the course of the game. See, you're trying to get this suitcase. There's a suitcase here that's in the middle of the board. You're trying to get that suitcase back to your headquarters. And barring that, if the evil Dr. Solomon gets the suitcase, and that will happen after a certain amount of turns, then you want to have given Dr. Solomon the most coins. The most coins Dr. Solomon will then win the game. So those are the two ways to win the game. How do you go about doing it? On your turn, you have three different actions. These are pretty much the same action. You can make a payoff to one of the agents. You just tell people, I'm paying off one of the agents. You can put any amount of money that you have on any agent. Once you put it there, though, it's there forever. You may also put a single coin on Dr. Solomon. Again, you don't need to tell people what you're doing. You just say, I'm making a payoff. You can also move an agent, and you can burn an agent. Let's take a look at how to do that. When you decide to move an agent, you just say which agent you're going to move and where you move them to, to an adjacent city. Um, so I can move Tempest here to Budapest. Alternatively, you can move any agent who's in one city with a train ticket to another city with a train ticket. So let's say, though, I'm going to move Tempest to Budapest. I announce that first. Then starting on my left, each other player in the game can challenge me or they pass. If everyone passes, I, do the, I make the move and then I can use Tempest's special ability. If someone does challenge me, it's because they have at least one coin on Tempest. So let's say Susan challenges me. She says, I challenge you. I have, and then she says one. Well, I only have one coin on Tempest myself, so I have to kind of pass at this point in time, which means I simply can't move Tempest and my turn is over. Well, that was not fun. But let's say I did have three coins on Tempest and she says one and I say two because I don't want to show all my coins that I have. I don't need to tell her. You have to be honest when you do this, obviously. Well, she doesn't have more than one coin on Tempest, so at that point, she's take one of these restricted tokens and hang it over her shield, which means on her next turn, she can only make a payoff. You can't move an agent or burn an agent when you have this, and then she would simply take this off. It's just a one-time restriction for challenging someone. Each player can challenge you if they want to, and you can you know, go back and forth between each of them, but if you succeed through the challenges, you'll be able to move that agent to that spot and then do their special ability. Each of the agents has their own special ability. So for example, Tempest can move two more cities, can't use the trains, and can't move the briefcase with them. See, normally if an agent's with the briefcase, I can, when I move the agent, I can also take the suitcase with them. Again, you're trying to get the suitcase back to your base. Now, the special abilities that the other people have, Tempest can move two extra cities. Uh, the beacon can basically pull an agent into their spot. Spyglass is the opposite, where they can basically kick an agent out. You can't move the briefcase with these agents that are being moved. The briefcase, can, the magician, can kind of throw the suitcase. He can throw his suitcase from the city he's in to an adjacent city. 
And roulette is the opposite of that, where she can pull the briefcase into her city. And then the vagabond, essentially after you move him, he can, so if he was here down at the bottom of the board, he can move up here, then his special ability, he could use the train token. And he can take the suitcase with him. And that's pretty much all described here. Each player can do that. But there's that one thing I mentioned earlier, which was burning. So if you have two agents in the same spot, you can say the magician is going to burn the spyglass. To do that, I'm going to need at least five coins in the magician because I'm going to have to spend them and they're gone forever. Again, people can challenge you. You say, I'm going to burn spyglass. And someone's like, no, I don't want you to do that. Seven, because they have seven coins on magician. Not spyglass, but magician. And then, okay, then I'm up a creek. But if no one challenges me, or if someone challenges me and I win, I pay five coins off magician and spyglass is burned removed from the game and everyone is going to place a burn token on spyglass to remind them of that fact if you have a lot of coins on spyglass when she's taken out or whoever's taken out then well too bad you've lost those now after everyone has taken one turn in this game this marker is moved down this track and it's going to start at 20 for four players 15 for five players this marker here is placed between two players, so every time it gets to this person, then the die is moved. When the die gets to the very end, you're simply going to roll the die. And if the die ever shows this, the game will instantly end, and Dr. Solomon escapes, and then whoever put the most money on Dr. Solomon is the winner. Otherwise, the first person to get the briefcase back to their home area, they win. The board itself is cool. I really like the strings and pins. These tokens themselves, I also really like them. I guess you could play them standing up, but I'd rather have them laid down. They're, they're nice plastic with the imprinting on both sides of them. They have a good chunky feel to them. Uh, the coins themselves are good. My only complaint about the coins is when you put all 30 here, it gets pretty crowded. And as you put them on the players, it gets pretty crowded. I almost wish there was like little bins here I could drop the coins in somehow. I don't know. I think I'm being a little fiddly about that myself. Itself. But one thing I like is that these reserve spots, they're all different. So just because my beacon's over here and I see someone reaching that side of the screen, their beacon might be over there, but their beacon also might be on the other side or even in the middle. So I like that that you're not quite sure. This is a minor thing, but this is like a cool thing that the game has. The shields are nice and big. It's easy to hide stuff behind them, and they do stand for the duration of the game. Overall, the component quality is quite fine. You also might have seen this game as Casablanca. It was nominated in 1991, actually, for the Shabilis Yars. Uh, this game is a fairly light game. Uh, this is a game that I really enjoyed playing. I don't know that I wouldn't want to play it over and over and over again, although I gladly will play it a couple times in a row, right? Um, but it is a family-style game. This is the kind of game that should be sold in Walmart and Target and stores like that. It's really good in that regard. It is a spy theme, right? And there definitely is. I mean, you can play with families, but there's that whole burning someone, you know, basically erasing a spy's existence. So I guess the word burn is better than the word kill, but realize it's in there if you play with families. So this is an intriguing system because you're placing influence on someone. This is very similar to another game called Kremlin that does a very similar aspect where you are assigning influence and you can put a lot into one character, but you got to be careful because if that character is killed, everything's gone. So you got to watch what characters everyone else is moving. You don't, might not necessarily want to put out a lot of money on characters right away. You're just trying to keep the peace and trying to figure it out because if you can, let's say, you know, one of the characters, Vogue, I managed to get 10 influence on her, that's one third of my influence, and no one else does, and no one else has decided to take her out, or whatever, for whatever reason, and I can get her with a suitcase, then I can move her and no one can stop me. That's great, but I have to be very careful, because if I put 10 influence on Vogue, and then you use Vagabond and take her out, uh, there went one third of my influence. This is not a long game here. The box here says 30 to 60 minutes. Most of the time, it's going to lean towards 30 minutes. In fact, we played this in one of our Testing Tuesdays Live. You can go back and watch it just to see kind of how the flow of this game works. I like it. I think it's intriguing. You're basically just this, this, this watching everybody else, trying to figure out where they are. And of course, there's always the Solomon Gambit, which is called, in which you just keep giving money to Dr. Solomon and then try to keep anybody else from winning. It does seem difficult to get that briefcase back using the special abilities. That's, for me, that's how I pick my initial, you get your three coins on somebody, right? But when I start initially 
putting uh, people on spies, I look at the board, look for an ability that I like. Maybe the person who can throw the suitcase or whatever it might be. I, I, and they're in a position I like them. And then that person, I'm like, I'm going to go in with that person. But I'm also going to pick a secondary spy, put some influence on them, and have that person go around and start burning other spies. But then by burning, I have to give up five of my influence, and so that person might then be controlled by someone else who comes back to get me. Ah, I'm making this game sound deep and with layers of complexity. I don't think it's there. I think it's kind of mostly surface level. But again, it's something you can play with the family and kind of play these surface level things and not get too deep and not think too hard at night and yet at the same time feel that spy thrill, that spy chase. So I really enjoy Conspiracy. I think it's, it's fun. Like I said, it's not a game I want to play all the time. Sometimes I want to play something deeper and longer. But it's a really good remake of that classic game that I remember from my childhood. Dice Tower Judgment, approved!